The maintenance of the blood flow is essential to life. The loss of blood flow may occur because the heart that pumps the blood fails, because of blood leakage, or because the blood vessels become obstructed. The coagulation system has evolved to deal with the latter two events under normal circumstances by providing qualities which maintain blood in a fluid state within the vasculature while at the same time addressing leaks. This formidable challenge is met by nature producing a three-component system which promotes vascular blood fluidity while anticipating the requirement for local blockade of extravascular blood leakage. The system involves the vascular endothelial cells which line the blood vessel, the blood, and extravascular tissue. These three compartments function to produce an integrated response to attenuate blood leakage by localized activation at the site of vascular injury with the dimensions of the response relevant to the injury. The endothelial cells lining the blood vessel provide anticoagulants which maintain the blood platelet in a quiescent state. These cells also provide anticoagulants which inhibit the plasma blood coagulation system. The vascular anticoagulant systems are both passive and dynamic in nature and function in cooperation with plasma components. Heparin sulfate proteoglycans bind and activate plasma antithrombin, AT, greatly enhancing the reactivity of the serine protease inhibitor toward the enzymes which contribute to the blood clotting process. The endothelial cells also provide tissue factor pathway inhibitor, TFPI, which attenuates the clotting process by binding to the tissue factor, factor 7A, factor 10A product complex. Also constitutively expressed on the surface of the endothelial cell is thrombomodulin, TM, which binds thrombin and alters the enzyme to anticoagulant specificity by activating the protein C system. The blood itself is the primary supplier of pro and anticoagulant proteins in the plasma and platelets which are the principal blood formed elements which contribute to the coagulation reaction. When the endothelial lining is disrupted, in this case by a perforating injury, the extravascular compartment and blood interact to rapidly produce a vigorous local coagulation response which attenuates blood loss and initiates the vascular repair process. The adhesion and aggregation of platelets to tissue collagen and plasma and endothelial cell derived von Willebrand factor play the initial role in stemming blood loss. Platelets also provide the membrane receptors upon which the plasma-derived proteolytic coagulation complexes are formed and express their activities. Platelet adhesion, activation, aggregation, secretion, and receptor presentation serve to localize the blood coagulation process to the region of vascular damage. Tissue factor, TF, expressed on extravascular tissue binds pre-existent plasma factor 7A to activate two substrates, factor 9 and factor 10, to their respective enzyme products, factor 10A and factor 9A. The enhancement in the reaction rate which occurs with the complex of tissue factor factor 7A on a membrane when compared to plasma factor 7A toward both substrates is approximately five orders of magnitude. Prior to binding to tissue factor, Plasma factor 7A is essentially inert from the catalytic perspective. As a consequence, in the unbound state, the plasma factor 7A is also largely impervious to the abundant protease inhibitors in plasma. A unique feature of the tissue factor factor 7A complex is its susceptibility to inhibition by tissue factor pathway inhibitor, TFPI a triple Kunitz domain inhibitor which can bind both the tissue factor factor 7A complex, TF7A, and product factor 10A. However, the preferred target for TFPI is the product complex of TF factor 7A factor 10A, TF7A 10A. The preferred substrate for TF factor 7A is factor 10. Factor 9 is also a substrate, but with a significantly inferior rate of activation. Once produced, membrane-bound factor 10A can cleave one of the two sites, R152, 
required for factor IX activation, producing the intermediate factor IX alpha. Factor IX alpha is rapidly converted to factor IX-A by the TF factor VII-A complex. The small amounts of factor X-A initially produced, which escape inhibition by antithrombin, can activate a small amount of prothrombin, 2, to thrombin, 2A, on the activated membrane surface. This is an inefficient reaction compared with the subsequent major thrombin production catalyzed by the prothrombinase complex, 5A, 10A, which is over 10,000-fold more efficient. However, this initially produced thrombin is sufficient to catalyze further activation of platelets through cleavage of the PAR1 and PAR4 membrane proteins, leading to further platelet activation, secretion, and aggregation. The small amount of the thrombin initially produced also activates the plasma procofactors, factor V and factor VIII. Thrombin cleaves an internal activation peptide from factor V. The factor V-A product bound to its platelet binding site serves as the receptor for factor X-A molecules initially provided by the tissue factor, factor VII-A, TF7-A complex. The resulting prothrombinase complex, 5 a 10 a accelerates by over 300,000-fold, the generation of more thrombin, thus serving as a major amplification. In a similar fashion, the small amounts of thrombin, 2A, initially produced activates plasma factor VIII to factor VIII-A, simultaneously releasing the factor VIII from its plasma transporter, the large von Willebrand factor, VWF. Platelet membrane-bound factor VIII-A accumulates factor IX-A, produced by the TF factor VII-A complex to form the intrinsic factor X-As. This complex is six orders of magnitude more active than factor IX-A in factor X activation. It rapidly activates more factor X to factor X-A. The factor VIII-A, IX-A complex is 50-fold more efficient for factor X-A activation than the tissue factor 7A complex, which is downregulated by TFPI and the factor 8A, 9A complex assumes the major role in factor 10A generation. Some of the factor 8A after activation cleavages spontaneously loses a peptide fragment which corresponds to the A2 domain prior to forming the complex with factor 9A. This dissociation process leads to inactivation of those factor 8A molecules. Prothrombinase, 5A10A, and the intrinsic factor 10As, 8A, 9A, are protected from inhibition by antithrombin and other plasma inhibitors when in the complexed form. Throughout this process, anticoagulant reactions compete with the procoagulant reactions to produce a threshold limited reaction system such that the intensity of the stimulus must be sufficient to provoke a full blown procoagulant response. The thrombin initially produced may also bind to vascular thrombomodulin, TM, constitutively present on the vascular endothelial cell and activates protein C to activate a protein C, APC. This enzyme downregulates the reaction by competitively binding and cleaving the two active cofactors in their respective A2 regions, leading to inactivation of the intrinsic factor 10As. 8A, 9A, and prothrombinase, 5A, 10A complexes. If the pathologic stimulus is sufficient to overcome the stoichiometric and dynamic inhibitory systems, the reaction will proceed with thrombin continuing to produce its activation products. Factor 13, the precursor to the transglutaminase factor 13A and fibrinogen, are cleaved by the small amounts of thrombin initially produced. The products of fibrinogen cleavage by thrombin begin to be observed when less than two-tenths percent of the total thrombin, 2A, to be ultimately accumulated is produced. Fibrin polymerization resulting in a visible clot occurs when approximately 35 percent of the A peptides and 10 to 15 percent of the B peptides are released. The factor 13A cross-linking process occurs coincidentally with this initial fibrin formation. The aggregated platelets and fibrin resulting from thrombin formation are the principal components of initial vascular plug formation and now provide the engine which achieves hemostasis.
When a sufficient stimulus overcomes the synergistic inhibitor threshold, the accumulating mass of activated platelets will support increasing intrinsic factor 10As, 8A9A, and prothrombinase, 5A10A formation on their surfaces at specific platelet receptors and overwhelm the available local inhibitor concentration. These platelet-bound procoagulant catalysts execute the propagation phase of the reaction during which massive amounts of thrombin are produced efficiently and continuously as long as more blood enters the wound site, adding more platelets and resupplying the plasma procoagulant catalytic process. The propagation of thrombin generation continues to expand, now independent of the initially presented tissue factor, TF, as long as there is a continuous supply of blood through flow, delivering new plasma procoagulant reactants, platelets, and fibrinogen into the site of perforation in the vascular endothelium, leading to increased platelet and cross-linked fibrin accumulation. Once flow has ceased because of the formation of a dam, the overwhelming concentration of inhibitors present in blood, including TFPI, antithrombin, heparin cofactor 2, alpha-2 macroglobulin, and alpha-1 antitrypsin inhibit the various reactants as they dissociate from their respective complexes. In the vasculature downstream from the growing thrombus, procoagulant enzymes and active cofactors escaping from the wound site are quenched rapidly under normal circumstances by the stoichiometric and dynamic inhibitory systems of blood in cooperation with elements of the vascular endothelium. TFPI inhibits the tissue factor, factor 7A, factor 10A product complex. Thrombin 2A binds to resident thrombomodulin molecules constitutively present on the vascular endothelial cells. The resulting complex, TM2A, activates protein C to APC which in turn downregulates any intrinsic factor 10As, 8A, 9A. The free serine proteases, 2A, 9A, 10A, of the coagulation system in the plasma environment are rapidly inhibited by the surplus of antithrombin AT molecules. This reaction is significantly accelerated by the interaction of antithrombin AT with heparin sulfate proteoglycans, HSP, presented constitutively on the surface of the vascular endothelial cells. When operating properly, this system of blood leakage attenuation, known as hemostasis, displays the appropriate level of procoagulant required to obstruct blood loss, relevant to the vascular insult, but is precluded from systemic activation of the coagulation system. The terms initiation, propagation, and termination are selected for the semantic description of intellectually separable events during the blood coagulation process. The presentations associated with these three processes, however, are ongoing continuously in the phenomenon of hemostasis. These intellectually separable events can be further subdivided into the particular reaction sequences and can be identified mechanistically as contributing to the overall process. In reality, however, each of these sub-events and major events of the coagulation system with which they are associated part of an ongoing continuum in which initiation, propagation, and termination reactions occurring in an almost simultaneous collage of events leading to clot formation or elimination of clot forming activities.